Hey everybody, this is uh, Ramon Mejia from Geek Minds Podcast. Uh, this is episode 84 of the podcast, and every podcast we're bringing you around the best geek and tech news, and we discuss that news, and of course anything else we're interested in that week. And in geek news this week, I'm going to be talking about the Snapchat glasses, colonizing Mars, the end of Adventure Time, so sad, the new Black Panther villain, our impressions of Luke Cage, and much, much more. We'll be going to show, of course, with Geek News. And, of course, Geek News, we're going to begin. Uh, this show is actually going to be a headlines-only show this week. Edgar couldn't make it, unfortunately. We do scheduling issues. We tried to push it off a little bit, but it uh, didn't quite work out this week. So it's going to be mostly just headlines, me giving a slight little bit of commentary. And we're going to begin, with, though, with uh, Snapchat glasses. Uh, this week, Snapchat announced that it's actually releasing hardware. Yep, that company that takes pictures of people and is known for uh, other things, in this case, has actually released a physical product. It, uh, it's going to cost $129 per pair of sunglasses, and those sunglasses are going to be embedded w- with 115-degree lenses. You can record up to 10 seconds of rounded video, which is then transferred via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to a Snapchat app. Uh, spectacles will be available this fall in black, teal, coral, and it's going to be available on a limited basis. So to me, this kind of seems like a Google Glass knockoff. Um, style-wise, it's very unique, very cute, very interesting. And it's much more obvious when uh, you're recording. Like the little LED lights that that that, that light up around the, the glasses and the camera part when you're filming for 10 seconds. And maybe that limited function of, of only a 10-second recording will make it a little more palatable to the general public. They'll be less afraid of this kind of technology. So hopefully um, something like this will make wearables a little more inviting. In each. I know that was one of Google Glass's um, main faults is that the public wasn't quite as welcoming of it as the tech enthusiasts, unfortunately. Now, the next story is talking about Mars or Bust. Uh, Elon Musk this week announced plans to send ships to Mars, uh, part of a larger project involving SpaceX and the things that he's doing. This this is the main goal for humanity, according to Mr. Mr. Musk. Um, the whole plan is really long and complicated and very technical, but basically he's going to be using um, the SpaceX technology that he's developing currently and in the future to start making space travel cheaper, more efficient, um, using a different type of fuel source, um, better, larger rockets, we can make it better, stronger, more powerful, that kind of thing. Um, the ships are also going to be using solar power as well to get them from here to Mars. Um, he's he's going to try to use the, the 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 times of the of the year and decades when Mars and Earth are, are at their close to peaks, so the trip is as short as possible. Um, He's trying to lower the cost per trip to Mars from $10 billion to a measly $200,000, which is a very big project. And hopefully, uh, according to Mr. Musk, if his plans go through, um, humans can be colonizing Mars within 80 to 100 years. And flights are hoping to begin in 2023, which is not that far. Um, He's asking for volunteers to join the product, and I don't doubt that there are going to be tons and tons of smart, techie people uh, who are fully capable of of surviving on Mars. Uh, He's going to have a long waiting list of people who are willing to do this kind of thing ever since, of course, NASA stopped doing most of their flights. Uh, And our next story, also a tech story, uh, one baby born, three parents. Um, A five-month-old boy is the first baby to be born using a controversial new three parent technique um, what this means is that the baby contains the dna from three separate people three separate parents um, something that has allowed the baby to avoid having a deadly genetic condition passed down by his mother the technique which was uh, legalized in the uk last year allows parents with rare genetic mutations to have healthy babies by replacing a mother's faulty mitochondrial dna with another woman's during the ivf process um, seeing as mitochondrial DNA is only ever passed down by women, most females with mitochondrial diseases, this is really the only way they can have healthy children. And while this ban is still in the U.S., one ex, one that experts are encouraging the government to overturn, um, it should be noted that the procedure is controversial. Um, so if you're not familiar with how 
you know, genetics works a little bit. Um, on the basic level, you get half your genes from your mom, half your genes from your dad, um, you know, and that kind of forms the, the solid basis for, for genetic replication. Um, however, you also get specifically a mitochondrial DNA, which is kind of the energy factory of a cell, um, only from mom. So that is completely and utterly mom stuff. Uh, so if there is a genetic fault in that process, you can have some, some you know, nasty genetic story. But if you can replace just that portion of it with some something from someone else, um, you know, another woman, then there you go. You can get that fixed. So that's how you get, you know, one, two, three parents. So this is kind of cool to me. I'm always happy when science can help extend the lives of people and babies and children and make humanity a little healthier. Figuring out problems to, to genetic disorders is a great thing to me. And I hope that science and governments don't get in the way of it in the future. On to some of our entertainment news. Adventure Time is ending. If you're a fan of the Cartoon Network, you're probably a fan of the story. This is one of the very few comics and um, animated series that appeals to both parents and children equally. Uh, but this week, Cartoon Network announced that Adventure Time, a free willing cartoon st story far starring hero boy Finn and his ultra flexible dog Jake, will continue will conclude after its nice season in 2018. So it, you still got about a little while um, till that happens because the animated projects take so long. But the show is actually going to be finishing up. P people will have to find new jobs on the show. So uh, farewell to an actually wonderfully interesting story that's good for kids, um, but still has very interesting adult topics uh, for the grown-ups, and it's funny. So it's one of those shows. Also, in entertainment news, we have the Black... Panther villain cast. Um, Winston Duke from Persons of Interest uh, has been tapped to play the villainous M'Baku the Man Ape in Black Panther. So this is interesting news. Um, they're still filming that particular project along with Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, so it's interesting to see who's playing this character, how they're actually going to have him in the movie. We don't know. We saw how they kind of adapted the Black Panther costume. So they might be doing a similar treatment for, for the Man Ape version of it. Um, also, in entertainment news, it was confirmed by uh, an executive producer at Marvel that Doctor Strange's um, Eye of Agamotto is actually an Infinity Stone, if you can believe that. Um, it's another way that Marvel is incorporating the, the Infinity Stones within the Marvel Universe, setting it up for the, for the larger Roller project coming down the pipes in a couple years. So good to know. Also, there's a new trailer. I would encourage you to go check it out. It's kind of cool, but it only adds a few extra seconds to footage that you've all be probably seen. Okay. Um, one of the more interesting bits here, we have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them gets a big full trailer, folks. Uh, Warner Brothers has released a new full trailer for director David Yates' Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them film. Uh, it features a ton of wonderful footage showing off the Wizarding World in the U.S. and even shows a lot of the magical creatures. This one is great. Uh, you get a keen insight into some of the personalities of the characters. This one is actually a lot more action oriented. I was kind of worried watching the other trailers that this wasn't going to be as interesting as the Harry Potter films. Um, totally incorrect according to this trailer, that's for sure. A uh, ton of spells being flung around, uh, monsters on the loose. Uh, I mean, these aren't tiny monsters. These are the big giant monsters that uh, go bump in the night, apparently. And the uh, the, the larger you know, non-magical role, no homage role, is apparently starting to be aware of them, and there's some interesting forces involved, uh, some dark, secret, wizard-hunting wizards um, are, are involved in this one as well. Uh, so there's that, you know, almost uh, political conflict between what to do with the non-magical world and the magical world. Um, you get to see a, a bunch of new beasts. Um, I encourage you to go check it out. It's playing right now if you're watching the video version of the podcast. Okay, uh, and uh, more entertainment news, a Lion King remake. I know that that wonderful Disney classic, The Lion King with Simba and Mustafa and all those characters is going to get the remake job. Uh, John Favreau's live action CGI Jungle Book was such a huge hit. They literally made almost a billion dollars worldwide gross uh, in gross revenue or in gross for that movie. So, of course, Disney wants to make a, something similar with a more popular project, p p property, I should say. Um and he's getting the job. 
Um, the Lion King reimagined will include songs from the original story uh, and is expected to film in a more realistic style, just like the Jungle Book. So good for John Favreau. He's knocking it out left and right. Hopefully he gets this project as well. Uh, again, this is just almost rumor mongering slightly. Uh, Disney has confirmed that they do want to do this, but no directors, no actors have really been attached yet. So, you know, John Favreau, hopefully you get this one too. Also, uh, in Amazon news, Amazon, every single season releases, uh, single episodes of potential products that they're looking to find and they'll let the fans kind of decide by the viewership numbers, which ones they're actually going to find for a full season. And the winners this, this year are the tick Jean-Claude Van Johnson and I love Dick. That's the third one. Uh, those three shows were popular enough to get full season funding. Um, I haven't watched I Love Deck, but I have shown, seen Jean Claude's uh, spy actor thriller thing happening, uh, Jean Claude Van Johnson, in which he's secretly a s- international spy. Um, that's what he's been doing during his entire film career, and he's been using the film thing as a cover. And The Tick is a remake of the of the comic series um, that Fox did um, quite a long time ago that was super popular. This is a, to me, a much better, more faithful rendition of the comic um, storyline. Um, I love the first episode. It was very, it took, it was a lot darker than the happy go lucky version. Um, that was more like a, a, a Seinfeld episode that Fox did. I enjoyed it. I encourage you to go check them on Amazon if you have the time. And if not, they're going to get full seasons eventually. So you can enjoy it then as well. Okay, and our last story of the week, Luke Cage Season 1 starts. Yay! Uh, Luke Cage Season 1 has started on Netflix. It's available now, all 13 episodes. I encourage you to go watch it. It's a fun show. It's probably not the best, um, most politically correct um, (laughs) Netflix show. Uh, It definitely has a lot of um, black power. Um, There are more sexualization in it. There's more nudity. Um, There's a full-on, you know, uh, topless bar scene um, they don't show the nipples they're pasted over uh, but they show a lot of, of uh, a lot of women so if uh, it's it's more grown up than the other ones um, which may reflect uh, just the shift in stories you know each one of these stories that Netflix has produced on uh, Marvel has produced on Netflix they're different tones Daredevil is very straightforward actiony it's probably the most superheroish of the three but it's still dark and brutal um the violence is very bloody uh, jessica jones is more emotionally female oriented there's still a ton of action um it's it's a story of victimization and, and being a survivor of, of of trauma um but it's you know it's also a detective story um so and luke cage is a story of you know black power organization um who controls the fate of the black community, things like that. Um, and it's it definitely has a 70s theme song going on, like almost a black exploitation kind of uh, tone to it. Uh, um, watch it. If you like good stories, you're going to enjoy it. It's as simple as that. I know I have. Well, I'm not even through the whole season. I'm about halfway through. And I've loved every single episode. There's tons of action if you're into action. There's a love story. There's a very interesting backstory of how Luke Cage gets his his powers. There's everything you're looking for in a good storyline here. Um, but that's going to be it for the show, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Again, it's a short show this week. I'm um, going solo, so that's it. Um, if you like the podcast, though, and you and you really want to support us, um, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You don't have to pay a single dime to do so. You can find out all the ways you can do so at geekbindspodcast.com. But one of the big ways, of course, is to just spread the love about the podcast if you enjoy it. Uh, we're always looking for more listeners, viewers, watchers. You, we have a YouTube page where you can watch the videos. We have our website at geekbindspodcast.com where you can see, of course, this podcast and our new podcast, the Little RPG Podcast. Um, so if you, you know, share the link, um, talk about it on social media, all that doesn't cost you anything, but it does help draw attention to our wonderful new or our wonderful podcast. Uh, so we appreciate any support you can give. And if you, of course, if you can, you know, slide us a nickel or a penny or a dollar, even, um, you can do so at uh, our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash geek minds podcast. And of course, all that helps keep this, the whole thing live, free and free of advertising for you guys. So appreciate everything. Thank you very much for watching, uh, for the geek minds podcast. I am Ramon Mejia and Edgar Costa will be back next week, hopefully. Now, remember, folks, to go get about something.